Hey everybody, Lucas in particular. I've been asked to review the dot product. And the dot product is nice for two reasons. Um, the single biggest reason is that the dot product um, gives a number from two vectors. Okay, so let's create two vectors. And we'll do it as, um, we'll do it in numbers. Three I hat plus two J hat. And the second vector It's probably a little bit of G for green, but we'll keep going. Let's go minus two um, I hat plus four J hat. So the dot product is defined in a way that says a dot B is equal to the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cosine of the angle between A and B, which is horrible for us because we'd have to do a lot of trigonometry between these two vectors to figure out that angle theta. But the dot, dot product is also defined as combining all of your X components, adding them to all of your Y components. So this looks like um, AX, BX, AY, BY. Keep in mind, it has to be multiplication because the dot product is a form of vector multiplication. However, um, it has to come out as a number, which means we take our components for each of those vectors and we get a number. So back to our example, what we would get is three, Minus two plus two and the four off the J in the Y direction. And we can just crunch this as minus six plus eight. So we're going to wind up with a two. <laughs> okay, this just went from good to humorous. And this is going to have the units of whatever a and b happen to be as vectors. Um, we did a lot of dot products when we deal with work. So if I'm given a um, box that I'm going to push with a force, uh, make it easy, 10 newtons. And this force is going to travel uh, three meters, then our dot product, let me get out of the yellow. So when we did work, it was force 
dot distance. So this would just be 10 newtons, three meters, 30 newton meters. Now there are some subtleties in here. Um, I totally ignored the cosine because I knew it was zero degrees. But let's take a place where that's not the case. Let's give the um, same box with a small backwards force. And yet it's going to move forward three meters. So let's give a value of that force. Um, four newtons. Then our work is F three meters cosine of the angle between um, let's keep it as delta x. This cosine then between F and X is whee, all the way back to here. So it's 180 degrees, which tells me the work is my force, four newtons, times my delta X, three meters, times my minus one. But theta being equal to 180 degrees. So now the work is 12 newtons. So it really all depends upon how the vector you have um, is um, being used and being supplied. If your vector comes in IJK notation, or if it comes in bracket notation, then these guys are probably gonna be most useful here. There's no point trying to put these vectors into triangles at this point, just break down to the definition. However, if our forces come as um, uh, magnitudes of the vectors, then we should just keep them there and worry about the angle, and we'll wind up using... Um, uh, let's see, we'll highlight this one green, and we're going to wind up finding this one, this version of the dot product, the most useful of the two. If you're looking for a conceptual definition of the dot product, it is, it is the size of one vector as it um, applies to the direction of the other vector. And I really don't want to get into the vector theory because I'm sure to trip up. But the idea is if I have a vector A, working on some vector B, notice this is the cosine of the angle between them. Or if you want, this is a cosine theta multiplied by b. Okay, hope you found this useful.